Greetings, Earthlings. In this video, I want to talk about cancer and other diseases. Now, first, the medical disclaimer, I'm not a doctor, medical professional. Please do anything I say at your own risk. I'm just expressing my thoughts and speculations. I could be wrong. Don't trust anything I say. Go research it. Go consult other people if you want to think about it. I'm just throwing this out there. Some things I say could be way off, but hopefully this helps people anyway. All right. So in the previous video or videos, we talked about health as a spectrum. So there, you're not healthy, there, it's a continuum. So there's like sick and dead here, all the way to super healthy, but most people are somewhere in the middle and you kind of want to do things a little bit to get healthier and healthier. So in this video, I want to talk about what I think is a formula for cancer. Now that sounds a little bit pompous, so I just want to say I was inspired. I was listening to a Ben Greenfield podcast with, I forget the guest name, but I'll link the excellent podcast in the description. And there are, there's loads of information that they talked about that, including book recommendations and so forth. And I also, uh, anecdotally, I know several people that have had cancer and that are cancer survivors. And what I've noticed, not from just the people that I know personally, but from listening to stories, also, all these things together, this is like, I didn't just come, like, I didn't just sit in a chair and come up with this. Uh, I came up with this through just experiencing and listening to things. So I think that all the cancer treatment, all that stuff can be very confusing and overwhelming. So what I want to help you guys do is to really simplify it. But as Einstein said, make things as simple as possible, but no simpler. Now, this is not going to be a quick fix but it's gonna be, a, uh, I hope, a simple framework. Now, so through this simple framework, you guys will be able to know that like, okay, I should be doing a little more of this, a little less of that. So here's my idea. The idea is that you have resistance and then you have stress. What do I mean by resistance? So let's say you're a really strong person, then you could use different terms than resistance and stress, but you could say strength and stress. I'll just say resistance and stress. So if you're a really, really strong, let's say weightlifter, you can lift 200 pounds, 300 pounds or more. Now, what that means is your body is like resistant to the abuse of that weight. Now, if I'm like a five-year-old and I try to lift 300 pounds or I'm just like a regular adult and I try to lift 300 pounds, I'm probably gonna injure myself, especially if my technique is poor. So that means I haven't developed a a high kind of strength or, or resistance. So let's say if, I, if I'm not doing a lot of things, if I'm not healthy, I'm eating potato chips, I'm eating sugar, uh, just I have a, a corn syrup, I, I'm not sleeping, I'm really stressed out. All of these things are contributing stress. So how can I build up my resistance? Think, I think of the resistance as the positive forces in my life, whereas the stress is the negative forces. So what would be considered stress? Stress can be mental stress or physical stress. So if I'm exposed to, let's say, radiation, like a nuclear bomb, like nuclear radiation, that would be definitely a stress. If, I'm, if there's like mercury and lead in my food, that's a stress on my system. If I'm not getting enough sleep, that's kind of, uh, I would say, more cutting into my resistance. So the, if I sleep, for example, then I'm fairly resistant to having a bad day. I'm going to feel pretty good. So to me, it's which one is greater, your resistance or your stress. Now, I want to combine this with the health spectrum. So you're, where you are on the health continuum to me is dynamic. So it's not like forever in one spot. Let's say your resistance is larger than your stress. Then what that means is you have positive momentum. That means you are going to get healthier and healthier. Whereas if your stress is exceeding your resistance, then you're going to slide down your health scale and get sicker and sicker. So in terms of cancer, and I think this is why, I mean, there's a lot of theories that I, I actually like, like the cancer is a metabolic disease as opposed to just mutations. But I don't think there's like one simple answer. And that's why I think pe people are having trouble like pinpointing it because people want to find little they want to find reductionist approaches like cancer is just this it's just a mutation here it's just that I think it's it's a more complex thing so again let me give you an example let's say you are a fairly healthy person so you have a high level of resistance to bad 
things to stress, but if your stress is enormously high, like you were just exposed to the Fukushima, let's say radiation power plant or like Hiroshima, Nagasaki, that kind of business, that amount of stress can overpower any like reasonably healthy person's resistance. It's just like if I race Usain Bolt and I'm driving a car, he's world class. So he's like super health, I mean, super strong, super fast, but I have an unfair advantage because I'm driving a car. So in the same way, if your stress is just ginormous, then that's going to overpower whatever resistance you have. We can only deal with so much stress in our lives. So if your physical stress is tremendous, that can overpower it. Same thing with mental stress. Anecdotally, the theme I keep hearing, so for example, I know several people that are very healthy and they're like, oh, I was exercising, eating right, all, all this stuff, but they lacked meaning in their life in their lives or they felt stagnating. So like, like oh, I'm not doing what I ought to be doing. I'm in a career that I feel unfulfilled. I'm unhappy in my relationships, that kind of thing. So that's not a physical stress in the sense of diet or exercise. That's a, like a, a lack of purpose or, you know, there's stagnation mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And that is a kind of equally powerful angle. So, and that is a form of stress as well. So while their resistance may have been pretty good, the stress is not just physical stress, it's any type of stress. So and I feel that that exceeded their resistance and hence led to cancer. Now, oftentimes many people that are cancer survivors, when they survive it, they'll, do, they'll start doing a lot of things. They may, whether it's chemotherapy, I have my thoughts on that, which I won't go into this video, or they may ch change their health routine or their mindset or whatever. The point is they're trying to increase their resistance and they may also be decreasing the stress. So like, what's the takeaway from this video? If you actually you know, know someone that has cancer, or you have cancer, or you don't wanna get cancer, or other diseases, you gotta work on both ends. You wanna raise your resistance and decrease your stress. And like we said, resistance can be anything. It could be getting more sleep, eating a better diet. All of these are like little things that get you kind of like a stronger force pushing you towards more health. And stress can be anything that's bad, whether it's toxins in your food, it could be stressful relationships, lack of meaning. You know, if you've always, let's say, wanted to be an artist, but you're a lawyer, or you wanna be uh, a scientist, but you know, your family says, girls can't be scientists, or whatever it is, whatever, or you feel like I have to take care of a sibling or a sick family member and therefore I can't do what I, you know, um, I'm not saying you shouldn't take care of people, but if you feel like stagnation or you're not doing, you, you know you have a purpose in life and you're like, I'll do it some later date, I can't quite do it now. Look around, read, you know, listen to people's stories and you'll find a lot of people that have gotten cancer and were healthy, relatively, um, had stagnation in their lives. Like I said, there's the other case where people maybe weren't healthy, so they actually just had a lot of really bad things happen to them physically, whether it like poisoning or radiation or some, some other re really you know, biological things. So hopefully that helps. And I'm not offering a specific tip, like I said in this video, I, I don't wanna claim, you know, be a snake oil salesman and say, if, if, you, if, you, if you eat my cell, a special celery that I grow in my backyard, I'm gonna cure your cancer. I'm not curing anything, I'm proposing a framework which if you follow can simplify your quest to get more healthy. Um, and that's, like I said, you want to increase your resistance and decrease your stress. And both of these are made up of many things. So if you're trying to say that cancer is just X, Y, Z, so for example, cancer is a mutation, and I'll link the podcast below. In the, in the podcast, you know, they bring up the idea that feeling stagnation in your life that can trigger all of this mutation and metabolic issues of your body. So in other words, it, are the mutations causing cancer or is there stagnation? Are there other factors that cause the mutations? Oftentimes in science and medicine, there, there is a huge issue with confusing correlation and causation. And this might be one of those times. So again, I hope this was helpful. So try to work, you know, increase your resistance so you have a strong force for positivity in your life and decrease your stress. Even a little bit 
counts. So let's just say you're like to make it quantified a little bit. Let's say your resistance is at a level of 10 units and your stress is eight. So 10 minus eight is two, which means you have a net positive force. So you're kind of moving towards a healthier trajectory and vice versa, right? So if your stress exceeds your ability to deal with it, your resistance, you're going to start to backslide and gradually get sicker and sicker. And most people, once they start getting sicker, it's kind of like a wake up call, like, oh, I need to change something. I have to go to the doctor. I got to change my routine. I have to do something. And then they may do things to affect that equation, whether physically or changing their mindset, meditating, breathing, eating celery, vegetable, whatever, many things. So again, I don't, I don't want you guys to feel overwhelmed if, if your a loved one has health issues, but just think of it as a framework of resistance and stress. And you want to up your resistance, decrease your stress. And each of these are made up of many, many factors. All right. I know that was a little long and rambling, but I hope that helped. I'll see you guys in the next video.